Welcome and thank you so much for joining Lancaster University Leipzig as we delve into uh, the exploration of studying uh, a software engineering degree at Lancaster University Leipzig. We offer a Bachelor of Science with honors in software engineering. And today we have two special guests joining us. The first is Dr. Marco Caminati. Dr. Marco Caminati is a lecturer in computer science at Lancaster University's Leipzig campus. Uh, he previously worked within the schools of computer science and, and schools of computer science of the University of St. Andrews and the University of Birmingham. And he was awarded a Rutherford Fellowship at the Health Data awarded a Rutherford Fellowship at Health Data Research. Marco obtained a PhD in mathematics from Sapienza University in Rome after a master's degree in physics from the University of Bologna in Italy as well. His main research uh, interests are formal methods, computational logic, automated theorem, theorem proving, and their use to specify, implement, and formally verify computer systems. He has applied his research to digital health and to mechanism design. And today he's here to discuss uh, what a software engineering degree means for you. We also have today Maria Isabel Sanchez Omoloni Martinez, who is a first year student studying in our Bachelor of Science Honors Software Engineering program. And she came to the university from the country of Spain. So thank you, both of you, welcome. And now I will turn it over to Marco, um, Dr. Marco Caminati, who will uh, present to us about the degree. Thank you again for joining. Well, thank you, Matan. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm Marco Caminati. Uh, Matan already introduced me. So yes, I arrived in uh, Lancaster, Leipzig uh, last year, and I find that that exciting. I will try to uh, communicate uh, some of my excitement to you by starting illustrating uh, a bit of a generality of the about the degrees in software engineering. So I will try to share my screen now. Uh, I have some slides, and we can try. We can go through them. Uh, okay, I hope you can see my first slide now, by now, uh, if not, just interrupt me. Okay. So, yeah, let's start. Um, so here in Lacas Leipzig, we offer a uh, program in software engineering. And yeah, the idea today is just to, uh, to to communicate a bit of the the basics and what is about uh, what is like studying uh, software engineering, studying software engineering in Lancaster Leipzig and the basic uh, the framework and the general ideas. So, uh, software engineering is a, a, a practical skill based uh, um, course. But it entails a lot of what is done in, in the computer science uh, degree. So the, the, the tools, the, the concepts, uh, the general ideas that will be explored in software engineering are um, largely shared with a, a course in uh, computer science. Uh, let me go. OK. So. Computer science, uh, we can start with that. Um, computer science is about studying information, information processing. Uh, during the software engineering uh, program and the computer science program, you will learn, you will start learning what uh, information is, how it's processed, and what you can do with information in general. And uh, in, in computer science, of course, you apply computers uh, to, to, to process information. Uh, but in general, the, 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 idea, the ideas behind that date back even before the first computer was implemented in uh, roughly around the Second World War time. 
decades uh, before, actually, uh, when people like Turing uh, started thinking conceptually about uh, the, the notion of a machine, which would later be turned into a computer. So in, in this, in the module, we, we, we give uh, a broader, uh, how to say, information, uh, a, a broader uh, uh, instructions about what um, information is and how, the, how this relates to computers. Of course, the, the importance in computer science and software engineering is hardly to be understated, hard to be understated these days. You use uh, some kind of device uh, all the time, uh, starting from your computer, of course, your laptop, uh, smartphone, almost everyone has one these, has one, uh, these days. And down to uh, smart devices, which include some kind of system on, on chip uh, inside them, like a washing machine, uh, coffee maker, and most uh, intelligent device devices that are getting pervasive in smart homes, for example. So, but what's behind that? That's something uh, anyone wanting, wanting to work uh, with computer science or, or software engineering needs to know, at least to have an idea when, when the time comes to use uh, machines and devices, and when it comes the time to uh, implement uh, programs. So to do that, uh, you, have, you need to have a clear idea of what an algorithm is, uh, what are the basic concepts in programming, and how to represent data in a computer. These are all the main ingredients that are um, explored in, in the, uh, in the um, um, program of software engineering. And you will also get an idea of uh, how things work in the hardware. So uh, you get an idea about conceptual uh, foundations like algorithms and programming, but then you need to uh, translate this abstract uh, concept into uh, working uh, programs which run on machines. So we, you, you will explore uh, how a machine is built, uh, how it works in general, the architecture of a, of, a, of a computer and how all the parts are held together. From down, down from the, the very basic uh, components of hardware, beats, gates, and chips, up to the operating system, um, which uh, orchestrates all these components in a tidy and organized way. And then once you get to know these basic ideas, actually, even before that, you will start also exploring how to use uh, all the entities mentioned above uh, by programming, uh, exploring techniques to program. And here in Lancaster Adaptic, we have a strong focus on uh, lab time. So you will have um, access to labs and uh, to to actually put in practice what you learn during lectures, uh, during uh, lab sessions and workshops. Usually this will consist of exercises, uh, usually um, in which you code um, and apply uh, the, the theoretic ideas that you have learned during lectures and try to produce something concrete from that. Okay. And once you get uh, the, the ability of, of doing that, the idea is that, is that we, we bring you up to uh, actually producing um, in tools and, and uh, software to uh, apply them to high level um, tasks, like using computers to, to process information in concrete settings, such as uh, information system, artificial intelligence framework frameworks, which are very important these days. And of course, in, in fields such as computer networks, uh, 
you will explore how uh, the network uh, works in, in principle and in practice, what is the internet. And uh, the, 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 the program also explores uh, the impact on society of, 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 of these devices and, and technologies. Uh, a focus, a particular focus of uh, software engineering is in the process of actually designing and delivering complex software. We will see a bit more in the next slides. So delving a bit more in, in, into software engineering matters, uh, up to now we, we have seen what's shared between computer science and software engineering uh, programs. Now we try to, to look a bit more into the specifics of software engineering. And we start with a picture. Uh, so these two people are on the, on the left, uh, Ken Thompson, on the right, uh, the late Dennis Ritchie. So these two people are uh, cornerstone figures in, in modern uh, computer science and the products that you use every day. They uh, developed Unix, which was a massively influential operating system, meaning that many, many machines nowadays to run uh, uh, use this uh, operating system or a, der a derivative of it. Android, for example, is arguably a derivative, uh, a relative of Unix designed by, by these two uh, scientists. And for example, Windows, of course, borrowed, borrowed many ideas from the Unix designed by these two people. And why I'm starting from that? I'm starting from that from this picture because these two guys worked in the late '60s uh, when they started developing the, uh, their influential uh, software products, and they work in small teams. They they were working at Bell Labs, as you can see on the T-shirt, uh, which was a now uh, was a. a, a um, a very influential uh, center for developing many uh, innovations and uh, up to the 90s, roughly, when it was dismantled. And the, the, the interesting thing is that these two uh, guys worked in a very different way as compared to what you probably uh, could find in, in, a, in a nowadays in, in a, any software industry. So they worked in small group, isolation mostly. Uh, they had a lot of freedom. Basically, they uh, specified what they wanted uh, as, as they went. So uh, they, had, um, they, they knew that they had to uh, provide some operating system, which was hopefully usable and, and with good design, but they have very little constraints on what kind of design to, to adopt, what, what tools to use to implement this project. And uh, so nowadays, situation is a bit different. You can compare these two guys with a craftsman and, uh, and think about modern uh, software engineering as industry. So you want to produce uh, software in a, in a quick way, as quick as possible, at the same time to deliver correctness and uh, good uh, practices. And, uh, and this effort entails a lot of um, practical points that software engineering must uh, focus on. So for example, since you, you, you want to provide, to produce some software in an in, in industry-like way, which means efficiently and uh, with, with good options for man maintain the product in the future, uh, you typically have a very streamlined and formalized uh, process when, when you develop uh, a software product. And the software engineering uh, is, is focused on teaching that. Uh, so how you can uh, master techniques, not only to, to code, but to code uh, in, in a, efficiently in a group uh, working on 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 a on a deliverable pro pro project that maybe has a deadline, 
and uh, you, you will need, of course, to employ best practices to make this work because typically you will work in teams which can be very big if, uh, if the project is, is very big. So teamwork is a key word there. And typically you will need to choose the right tools to do that. It's not like in the time of uh, Richie and Thompson where they design their own tools actually to build their project. They, they in the process, they produced uh, one of the most used uh, programming language these days, which is C. And in, in, in most contexts now, on, uh, as you will have to, to choose between available tools that are given to you already. And you will need to have abilities to orchestrating and organizing large projects, or at least to follow the directives that you are given to or when or organizing large projects. And typically you will have to interact with the customer, trying to understand uh, the need, their needs. And from that, uh, analyze the requirements that you are given by the customer and try to come up with a, uh, formal specifications that will help in streamly, streamlining and formalizing uh, the whole process. And finally, you will need to be, of course, to deliver something at the end of the day, uh, which will match this, the specification that you work out uh, by aliasing with the customer. So it's not only about coding, software engineering is about the whole package, uh, how to, how to, uh, at all the skills needed be beyond uh, programming, which is a key skill. And uh, you will need to add all these uh, context uh, uh, competences that in order to integrate to the, the job market these days, for example, if, if one day you end up uh, working in a, in a software industry, uh, you will need to take into account all these aspects, not only the, the coding aspects, so let's see an example. This is just, just a possible example uh, illustrating um, how uh, the process leading to a software uh, uh, deliverable could work in, in a streamlined and in a big organization, for example. So as I mentioned, it, since the, 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 the project could be very big and the team could be very big, uh, it's key that um, a formal uh, diagram illustrating how each component of the team work and which steps are needed uh, so that it can be followed um, uh, precisely. So you will see that you can see here that in this, in this example, you have all the steps leading from uh, the beginning, which in this case is defined goals. So maybe you in interact with a customer, the customer tells you, oh, I would like a product doing this, this and that. And you typically given uh, some, some informal def description of that by the customer, which occasionally could also be inconsistent. And so you will need to analyze uh, the requirements and come up with a specification analysis and hopefully with a design, which is a conceptual uh, notion on how to, uh, on paper, you, want, you would like to implement the, uh, something that delivers about the goals that you are required. And after that, after a design phase, you will have something more formal that you can develop, hopefully. And maybe you have uh, several components in your design, so a backend or a system, and maybe a user interface. And for big projects, of course, you have different uh, sub teams working on the different components. And then you might have iterations with the customer to, to, to make sure that what you have is, is correctly at, is correct at any point. And you will have testing phases, documentation phases, and uh, tests to, to, uh, to make sure that the usability is okay. And a, a, a lot of um, aspects that need to be considered. And in software engineering, you will uh, learn uh, methods, methodologies to, to make this uh, kind of um, streamlined processing viable and what techniques are there, uh, how to, how to uh, deploy these techniques to actually uh, deliver concrete software. Okay. 
And even when, when you reach end of development, keep in mind that uh, for, especially for big projects, you will have a, a maintenance phase, um, which will need to take care of possible evolution of software, possible uh, bug corrections, and uh, possible extension of software, and so on. And this is also, of course, uh, a field which has its own, its own methodologies, its own uh, systems, which you will learn. Okay, uh, I hope this clarified a bit uh, what the software engineering program is about. Maybe it can be useful to now to try to have a, com a comparison between computer science and software engineering. Both uh, programs are, are available at Lancaster Leipzig, so it can be useful to um, to try to have, draw some distinction between them. So I just took a quote which I find uh, useful to to get some a bit of distinction between the two. So the, as I said, there's a, there is a large overlap between computer science and software, uh, software and engineering uh, programs. And both of them, you will have a, a, a lot of uh, cornerstone material that you will need to learn. In computer science, however, you will uh, focus a bit more on uh, uh, maybe theoretical solutions uh, or coding without maybe taking into account how uh, concretely uh, a, a project of uh, can be delivered to a customer, for example, but maybe thinking more about a solution which uh, works, uh, but maybe needs to be deployed to, 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 to actually be made available to a customer or to people wanting to use that. On the other hand, software engineering, as, as we saw, uh, focuses on around actually designing and developing and documenting and delivering uh, some software which is uh, user-friendly, usable, uh, complete, of course, bug-free, uh, well-documented, so it can be uh, maintained and uh, evolved in the future. And this translates into uh, what uh, you will do in, in the two uh, programs. So in computer science, you, you will uh, focus more maybe on analyzing new ways to work with information. So we'll have some modules about distributed system and artificial intelligence, for example, machine learning, and a, a bit more of a, a view of about um, underlying concepts of pro programming languages, so how they work and so on. On the other hand, in software engineering, you will have a strong focus on practical group projects uh, web information systems development, and in general with hands-on experience uh, with developing large systems. Uh, as I said, I, I cannot focus that enough. Uh, programming and knowing how a computer works and knowing the general concepts is uh, essential in both cases. So programming is a tool in both courses and you will have to master uh, the, the ideas behind that to be successful in any of the two programs. And so I try to give uh, some uh, motivation on how uh, a student would want to choose a software engineering program. Maybe you are curious about how information technology works. Uh, you want to know how uh, things work behind the scenes when dealing with uh, software or gadgets, electronic gadgets, and so on. And maybe you would like to impact people's lives by delivering useful, uh, friendly software, which can improve quality of people's life and indirect, indirectly your own life because uh, jobs for this kind of, uh, for delivering this kind of software are typically very well paid. Or oh, maybe you would, uh, Maybe you would like to keep up to date with the evolution of IT. As I mentioned, a key, um, a key factor in, in the in software engineering is to use the right tools which are given to you. But these tools uh, change and evolve all the time. 
So you, it's a, in, in software engineering, uh, you will need to be aware of what's out there, what tools are there, what language framework and so on. And if you like to follow these uh, things, then maybe software engineering is a good choice for you. Another uh, reason to choose software engineering is the breadth of possible roles that you, will, you could end up working on uh, in the future. Because as I mentioned, typically uh, you will work in a big project, big teams, and there are lots of uh, steps and components there. Uh, so different tasks uh, that you, you might you might choose in, in your working life, ranging from designing or interacting with, with customers, uh, analysis of requirements or development, which means coding, for example, or maintenance, uh, testing programs, uh, document, producing documentation for your software and expanding uh, existing software and so on. Uh, another, for the same reasons, uh, another key component in if you like teamwork, then maybe software engineering is a good choice for you. It's very likely that, I mean, team working is, a, is really basic uh, in software engineering these days. It's very unlikely that you will work on your own on a project. And typically you will work on teams, being them small, medium or large, but you will uh, need to have good teamwork uh, abilities uh, in order to work in a software industry, for example. Okay. Uh, just, I'm just coming to the, roughly to the, the, the conclusion of, of the main part of, of the slides, just to, with an over, overview of uh, what modules you, you will find in a software engineering program. So in year one, you will have, uh, um, core, four core uh, modules, which explore the basics of um, digital systems and computer science in general, and the information system, and the basic idea of software development. And in year two, uh, you will have advanced programming, which uh, will uh, uh, take you from what you learned in the first year uh, about coding and for example in software development on, and fundamentals of computer science uh, and explore advanced concepts uh, this typically means that you will have in advanced programming you will explore different languages with their different uh, paradigms uh, and try to uh, to apply what you learned in the first year uh, to exploit the, uh, the particular um, features of a given programming language. And this can be very useful for a software engineering because it, the idea is to give, to give you the, the, the general concepts that each uh, different paradigm in programming has so that you can uh, more easily learn whatever new language will come in the future and, and try to adapt in a, in a better way to the always evolving uh, market of the software tools that are available to for your job. Computer networks is um, exploring uh, the, the details of, of, of a network, uh, giving you the, the, the architecture of modern networks and uh, the abstraction layers that are employed in order to keep such a huge thing as the internet um, maintainable by humans. Uh, software design is about yeah trying to uh, develop a project on your own or in groups and databases is uh, gives you the bread and butter of uh, handling uh, databases which are at the, the bottom level for many applications including big data uh, machine learning and so on then you will have human computer interaction, uh, teaching you the, the concepts that make a good interface, for example. Operating system, uh, as mentioned before, is uh, about what's behind, between you and, and the hardware machine. So an operating system will allow you to use actually um, your, your hardware, the hardware that you have. And this module will give you uh, insight on how this is done. 
And then you will have social, ethical, and professional issues in computing, which is again very relevant uh, when you when you end up working in uh, producing software, for example. And uh, then you have uh, on the bottom, I placed uh, the modules which are um, specific to uh, software engineering. So in second year, we will have a specific module about software design studio project one, which will have two more uh, components in the third year. And in the third year, the software engineering students also uh, study internet application engineering, which bases on what you learned on the computer network modules uh, to actually implement, uh, for example, uh, applets living uh, on 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 a browser and uh, so internet applications basically and in year three you will also have uh, core modules security and risk uh, distributed systems languages and compilation and a third third year project okay i wanted to conclude quickly by having a look at our own campus so Lancaster University as is uh, a leading UK university. It's consistently ranked uh, at the top of our all UK university rankings, and it's it's research intensive institution, meaning that uh, you will find lecturers which uh, who uh, do uh, um, edge research in their fields. And uh, yeah, and at the, at the same time, the, the university is ranked uh, usually quite good in in the legal tab league tables, which um, gives you an idea how how good the, the teaching delivery is in a particular university. And the the campus, the Lancaster University campus in Leipzig. As, uh, was I mean, the location was chosen uh, for several reasons. One of that is that uh, the city is vibrant, uh, both culturally and economically. We will see a bit more details in the last slides. And the good thing is that uh, at, at, um, uh, the Leipzig campus, you will get a, a word, you will you'll be awarded a UK degree, exactly as the same, exactly as, as the students uh, studying in Beirut in Lancaster, and but an, another uh, bonus is that you will find a very international group of students. Here we have students from all over the world. At the same time, you will have the possibility to uh, visit the main campus in in Lancaster in Beirut if you want to. And this is just a view from the terrace that we recently opened in our department. We are very proud of it. So, yeah, just uh, uh, leading to the conclusion. Oh, sorry, there is a chat. I didn't see that. Hi, uh, Dr. Caminate. It's Matan. Yeah. I just wanted to ask um, when you were talking about the course modules. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, in year one of the degree, my understanding is that students can also take um, a couple courses from business management or accounting and finance. Yeah. Do you know how many courses that is? Um, actually, I'm not sure, but I, I... Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. The student support team will know. Which, yeah. do, you, do you notice a trend in the courses that your students would study? Like, because they're studying software engineering, I would assume that most of them want to study maybe finance or management because those are related to potential career opportunities for them. Yeah, yeah, I guess I guess that's the case. Uh, I don't have uh, numbers, but uh, that's my, my sens sensation too, I mean, my intuition. And I guess that's the reason uh, that you mentioned. I mean, as I mentioned, uh, if you end up working in a, in a large team, could well be that you have to to uh, to focus not only on uh, uh, delivering code, but also on the financial implication of uh, of of the project that you are in and uh, how to manage a project from a 
all the aspects. And so I guess, yeah, students could usually find that a good, a good combination. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, sorry if I didn't see the question before, uh, apologies for that. Uh, yeah, I have a menu hiding, so I didn't see it, sorry. Okay, uh, sorry, I skipped one slide. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to conclude uh, quickly uh, with some figures about the university. So Lancaster University has five campus across the globe and it has a number of partner, partner, partnerships, sorry, on research. And uh, yeah, quality of teaching is very good in UK and in general in the world, you can find, uh, if you're curious, you can explore the rankings more in detail. I, uh, there are uh, the exact um, references on the slide. I hope they are visible. If not, I'm happy to provide them. <clears throat> okay, and another, another important point is that uh, in, in, from many point of view, points of view, you will have uh, the best of both worlds studying, getting a UK degree, and at the same time being able to spend it, uh, for example, in Germany, which you will uh, be living it, will be living in, sorry, and uh, which is a very attractive country, of course, uh, big economy, a stable economy, uh, with strong um, um, focus on exporting uh, machinery, 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 vehicles, which of course is all fields for uh, applying software engineering in them. And Saxony is nicknamed Sil Silicon Saxony is, is uh, one of the largest hubs uh, for uh, microelectronics in general. And Leipzig is within Saxony, of course. Germany also has a quite a uh, good unemployment rate, which means very low. And uh, many uh, giants uh, industries are based in, in Germany, Volkswagen, Allianz, Siemens, and so on. So this makes the combination uh, quite attractive, I would, attractive, I would say, for a software engineer. And just, just quick words about Leipzig. Uh, Leipzig is a it's a mid-sized city, 600,000 people, more or less, uh, a sizable uh, population, student, student populations, and it's well connected. And it's quite lively. Uh, there are several museums, lots of events. I must mean, I say, I remember my first week uh, in, in Leipzig, I found some uh, impromptu party going on in the park near my uh, residence. and. I immediately had the chance to meet lots of people. So it's, I like that. And you will find, of course, lots, lots of uh, amenities, uh, uh, restaurants, cafes, and you will have woodlands around that. It's a nice place to be, I would say. And that concludes my presentation. Uh, so if there is any question, I will be glad to try to answer them. And thank you for uh, watching and listening. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> I have I hid my um, my video, but now I can't uh, turn it back on. <laughs> um, sorry, why why won't my video come on? Maybe I um, need to stop sharing. No, no, I I turned off my video in a way that hid it. I think permanently. I can see you if it is, if it helps. Oh, you can. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Um, so, uh, so uh, basically, thank you so much for presenting to us, Dr. Caminati. This was really, really interesting. And before I welcome up Maria, who is um, a current year one student from Spain uh, in the Bachelor of Science Honors Software Engineering Program, I wanted to remind participants that if you are joining today's call, if you have any questions, so please feel free to put your questions into the Q&A uh, or the chat window, either is okay, and we will answer your questions. Um, but I, I had a couple of questions myself. 
I really appreciated the presentation because of course, as, as uh, the recruitment manager for international students, I get lots of questions when I'm traveling and meeting students. You mentioned, um, you mentioned designing, analyzing, developing and maintaining um, uh, you know, complex systems. And I wanted, I wanted to know um, if you could just highlight potential job opportunities in those, in those different areas. I guess the question I'm really getting to is that a software engineering uh, uh, program or, or degree would enable our students to even specialize further in one of these types of areas and designing products and analyzing their effectiveness, developing, um, I think you, you said developing um, could be to extend um, you know, programming to build on what already has been produced um, yeah. to make sure that it maintains, you know, relevancy in a modern and changing world, and then maintaining to make sure that things are functioning. What yeah. would be a couple job opportunities that students would be able to look forward to post graduation, just off the top of your head? And sorry to put you on the spot. No, it's fine. Uh, well, it's the, the, I think the attractiveness is that. Uh, as I mentioned, the, 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 the wide range of possibilities there because you will have uh, uh, lots of different figures in a typical uh, uh, software development um, um, uh, context. Or, of course, uh, I mean, one, one, the, 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 the one coming up to my mind first is the role of a developer in which you are given some specifications and you are, uh, your job is to produce software uh, satisfying these specifications, and, uh, and this is this is everywhere. I, I guess in in any 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 industry producing a, a software or producing some device like I don't know Siemens here in Germany, they will have any any device nowadays is more in some to some degree intelligent, so it will need to have implemented uh, some, some um, code within it or if you if you think about cars they they have lots of intelligent components uh, inside them and if you are a developer then you can end up working in in basically any industry relating to uh, technology uh, because i cannot think of, of of a device which doesn't have a, a, some kind of intelligence within it and so if you if you uh, if you are a developer, you you can contribute to any of that. Uh, it's just a matter of, uh, of course, we we try to give the the general framework in order to for you to uh, be able to uh, specialize uh, quick as quickly as possible to whatever technologies you will be using as a developer. Uh, there are a huge range of those, and uh, every project is different. But if you have a good grasp of the general ideas, then your job would, will be much easier. And typically, you will you will be given time anyway to to specialize to the uh, tools that you whatever workplace you end up to uh, using. Perfect. Okay. Uh, at this time, because we're running out of time, and uh, Maria has to get to class at two o'clock, um, so I wanted to quickly introduce Maria to the call. Uh, Maria, if you could turn on your audio and uh, video. Uh, Maria is a year one student in the Bachelor of Science Honors degree in Software Engineering at Lancaster University, Leipzig. Welcome, Maria. Um, I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions about your experience. Uh, first off, uh, how are you enjoying your degree? You are toward the end of your first year. So how has the year gone and did it meet your expectations? Um, and are you happy you selected software engineering? Yeah, no, I am really liking it. Right now I'm with projects and exams, but even so, I'm liking it. It's really interesting, everything we are learning. And um, yeah, honestly, uh, all of those things that Dr. Caminati talked about, um, I already had the idea more or less and yeah so when I chose uh, to study software engineering I was looking for 
uh, this type of things uh, I wanted to program, but also, uh, as he said, um, like help people, even if it's coding. And yeah, like he said, it's it isn't all only coding, but a lot of more things uh, behind it. And yeah, like it's it's what I wanted. I think it's even better than what I expected. So I'm really happy with it. Excellent. And um, so you, from what I understood, you uh, you kind of already knew you wanted to go into software uh, engineering. And why did you end up selecting Lancaster University's campus in Leipzig, Germany? Yes, so honestly, at first I wanted to go to UK, um, but because of Brexit, it was, uh, I couldn't go. So I started to look for other universities in other countries and other places. And I found that Lancaster University had a campus on Leipzig. So I started to look, uh, yeah, I saw that it had uh, software engineering. Uh, it was a really good university. And also it was in Germany and I think Germany is a really powerful country. Um, and, then you are studying in English, you will have uh, an English degree, which has a lot of recognition. So yeah, I, I really wanted to come here. Excellent. And one final question. Um, do you plan to stay in Germany after you graduate? Um, I mean, Dr. Kaminati mentioned we're, we're really in the heart of Silicon Saxony, uh, Leipzig being the largest city in Silicon Saxony. Um, and Silicon Saxony is a cluster of about 2,500 uh, companies that are spread out throughout the state of Saxony. Um, but Leipzig being the largest city, of course, it's a great home base. Um, to work for some of these technology giants. Do you plan on staying in, in Germany uh, after you graduate to benefit from post-study work opportunities or? Yeah, probably, yes. Uh, I thought uh, about it and yes, you said it's a really good country. It has a lot of opportunities. So yeah, I would like to stay here and find some job because I honestly think it will be easy to find because there are a lot of jobs for software engineering here. So, yeah. Perfect. Okay, anything else you'd like to add, Maria, before we let you go so you can get to your class? Uh, I don't know. Um, I'm, I really like uh, being studying here in, in Leipzig. Also, the university because um, it is like in the city center. Uh, it's also really good. It isn't like UK that has uh, their own campus uh, like outside of the city, more or less. Uh, yeah. Here is in the city, and I think it's also like a really big experience. Uh, you have everything. Uh, next to the university, if you want to, if you have a break and you want to eat something, you can go to some cafe because there are a lot of uh, them here. And yeah, you have everything next to the university. So you're enjoying the city. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good. good, good, good. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much, Maria, for joining us. Um, and we really appreciate your time today and enjoy your class uh, in 10 minutes. Uh, Dr. Kaminati, one quick question before we jump off. Um, we have a question from a, uh, from a current applicant of ours. Yep. He's asking, um, I should know the answer to this, but I don't. Hmm. Uh, do you know how many students are currently in the software engineering program? Uh, I only know a partial answer, meaning that I teach second year and I know how many of them are in second year. Uh, that's what, yeah. I, what I can provide. And at the moment they are um, four, I think. Uh, 
So the second I, year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I teach I, I teach only core modules. So I treat for me they are all the same because they they my, I mean computer science students and software engineering students, but I think they are yeah four or five uh, for second year. So you need to add first year students, of course. Right, because uh, just to add a quick note to this, we we opened the university in uh, October 2020. So we're just in 2022 now. So we've only had two big intakes, um, which were both affected by COVID-19 um, pretty dramatically. So we have about 120 on campus uh, and we're expecting about that number for next September intake. So um, software engineering and computer science uh, are probably two of the most popular programs, particularly with international students. Um, so yes, we have only four students in year two, but in year one, I think the number is closer to 30 or 40. Uh, yeah, yeah and, we are like, uh, I don't know, we are like 10 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, for next September, we're looking at much bigger numbers because we have a lot of applications currently coming in for the software engineering program. And of course, if you're studying software engineering, some of the core modules, I believe you'll be studying um, with students that are also in the computer science cohort. Okay, so uh, Dr. Kaminati, would you like to add anything before we end today's session? Yeah, well, uh, I would like to add that as a, as, as a lecturer, uh, it's great to be here. So I'm confident that as a student, uh, the same thing would apply to anyone wanting to come here in Leipzig. It's a nice place to be. University is, uh, is, is yeah, one of the top UK universities and you will get a degree, uh, a UK degree. You can spend uh, whenever, wherever you want, in Germany, UK, Europe. So yeah, that's my final take on that. Excellent. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us and thank you to the participants that joined today. Uh, we will have a recording available of today's session as well as a recording of the previous session that we did uh, on computer science. Um, and uh, thank you again. Have a lovely day. Maria, enjoy class. Thank you, Dr. Kanati, for joining us. Thank you, Matan. And have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're calling in from. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Maria. Thank you, Matan. Bye. Thank you. Bye.